My next guest... My next guest attracts the sort of compliments that would never come the way of Clive or myself. Delicate features, porcelain looks, natural grace. Having said that, please don't trip over on the way in. Jan Francis. <laughs> Jan, your series, Just Good Friends, is immensely popular, but I do get cross about the way Penny is treated by Vince. Does it make you irritated? Oh, my God, how sweet of you. That's lovely. Um, to begin with, I did get a bit fed up with her. Yes, I wanted to shake her a bit and say, come on, stand up for yourself. But then, as the series progressed, I think she grew up a bit, got more sensible, and, and she does love him so much, you see. Mm. That's the problem. <laughs> And yet, you've described him as being a peanut. Are you referring to the <laughs> size of his head? Or what? No, please, nothing like that, no. No, I just said it's a bit like eating peanuts, that you know they're bad for you, and yet you just, just can't stop. <laughs> we understand that here, don't we, Clive? Uh, oh. The public are, are concerned as well, aren't they? They get very cross on your behalf. Yes, they do. Lots and lots of letters. And, um, surprisingly, lots of people who've been in that situation, which really amazed me, poor things. But uh, um, the interesting thing is that the women I meet all say, oh, go on, love, he's gorgeous, go on, it doesn't matter. And the men I meet all say to me, leave him alone. You just leave him alone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what do you think, Clive? I like it. I think it's a, it's a great formula and it, it excites me too. But I keep wondering why, you know, can't they sort of just get on with it? Mm. Can't you just sort of get on with it? <laughs> I'll get on with it. <laughs> I'll ask you about, Jan, your yeah, first man. television part, when was that? first television part, a long time ago, was the thing called Anne of Green Gables. Yeah. And Kim Braden played Anne, and I played Diana Barry, uh, the rather rich one. I was rather pleased because I got all the nice dresses. Mm. And um, we kept declaring that we were bosom friends in every episode. Oh, you are my bosom pal, my bosom pal, because we were being Canadian. And the problem was, though, that we were, in fact, about 24, playing 11, and our bosom <laughs> <laughs> was strapped to us, so it was a bit truer than one had thought. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when you sort of strap your bosom down... Yes. <laughs> Where, where does it go? <laughs> Speaking for others, because as you can see, I don't have this problem. <laughs> I don't know, maybe they just get very fat knees. No. <laughs> it mostly goes to the back of the neck, I think. <laughs> what about other serious parts? You played a lot of serious parts before mm. you turned to comedy, didn't mm. you? It was, yes. um, the Secret Army? That was... Secret Army, that's right, where, uh, I was the leader of the resistance in the first place, mm. which, in fact, the series Allo Allo mm. is now doing rather funny, more funny than we did it. Mm. Um, my character was the one in the raincoat with the beret, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I used to come on very, very seriously and mutter in code all the time things like, Albert, the puppies are in the basket. <laughs> <laughs> To it again, ever again. Did you say? Did you say? Listen very carefully. I say this only. Once. <laughs> I wished I had. I didn't. But well, you're the natural as a pretty heroine anyway. But is there a nasty piece of work trying to get out in performance? Oh, that is. Yeah, yeah, a raging tart. I think really, but no one will let it out. Really? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, what Britt Eklund referred to was a slumper. That's a slumper. Yes, yeah, Swedish for tart. Actually, that's oh, what you'd well, like to do. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. What you did is what a lot of little girls have always dreamed of doing, and that is become a ballet dancer. You succeeded. How long mm. did you do that? I was with the Royal Ballet Company for four years, professionally. That's tough, isn't it? It was very, very hard work. I've always said it's a bit like being a racehorse. You have to train so hard. Yeah. And discipline and all the rest of it. Yes, discipline, which I don't think I'm really a naturally disciplined person. <laughs> but I, now I can't help it. I, I'm never late for things. I try really hard to be late. I cannot be late now, because we were told off so much about it. Makes a mess of your feet, doesn't it? Uh, yes, yes, my poor old feet did suffer. And I had to have them sorted out not so long ago. They were absolutely horrid. And if I went on the beach, I used to have to dig a hole. First thing I did, dig a hole, <laughs> put the feet in, and then just stay there all day. Uh, people were very frightened. Wasn't around the back, feet in the hole. Feet in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> What changes would you make in your young body, Clive? I, I can't think of anything about me that I wouldn't change, really. I'm, uh, <laughs> I always had a terrific problem about my personal appearance, and it was a great blow to me to find that everybody else was having a problem with my personal appearance. 
<laughs> but now I've sort of got used to it. But um, and, and I, I sort of quite enjoy the fact that other people have the burden of being handsome and so on. And, but I'm still I'm still vain about my personal appearance. Which is your good side, then? It's around here, my. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I worry about being on camera and everything, and I'm, I'm glad I've lost a little weight and everything, and so on. You, you can't help it. But I, I would love to have been a dancer. I don't see why you ever stopped, you know. Why did you stop? Re I, I injured my knee. Cartilage operation, like the footballers. Yeah. It shows how well I danced, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and then, during the time I had off to get my knee better, I discovered that there was life outside the ballet, and I, I went to the theatre and I, I met people, you know, met... Many yes, it's fatal there. to find out there is another world. Mm. Isn't so, it? The uh, dance has to be dedicated. Yeah. I couldn't really get back into it. I didn't have the enthusiasm. Well, we talked about the, uh, your discipline, but in fact, you're a great g giggler, yeah, aren't you? That was another problem, really. Yes, temperamentally, I don't <laughs> think I was quite suited because I did used to giggle my way through the more serious ballets, which was frowned upon rather. But there's, the... a lot of, there's a lot of giggly stuff in ballet. I mean, girl, the girls are it, aren't they? What really matters in ballet is the women. And I think the greatest choreographer of the century, Balanchine, he thought that too. He thought the women were it. Because yeah. the men are kind of, they're kind of, you know, even when they're geniuses like Nureyev and Baryshnikov, they're kind of giggle material, aren't they? Don't you find Well, for the, for the audience, mate. Well, that Nureyev, what? Yeah, that thing he's wearing. <laughs> <laughs> When the ray of comes on him, mean, we, wonder, what, what, we all wonder. We never found out. What's he, is he got, <laughs> <laughs> is he got Where does he get the batteries for that thing? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, there's David Frost's old thing, and that that is there for the ladies to put their foot on when he lifts them up. That's <laughs> you, you decided to become an actress. Were there problems in the transition? Then you discovered that's what you wanted. Yes, uh, yes, there were quite a few problems. Uh, the first thing I discovered was that dancers, uh, you probably know this, having studied dancers, dancers and actresses breathe differently. So that... <laughs> I, I, can I show you a minute? Look, do you mind? If a dancer, when they go on stage, they get a deep breath, hold all this in and dance. So I did this to start my acting and took a deep breath and stood there and... <laughs> <laughs> which wasn't too good. That was coupled with my Royal Ballet feet, which were like this. I walked like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I couldn't learn lines either. Well, apart from so, that. No, and I had to write them on my hand. This is really true. I wrote them on my hand. So <laughs> imagine I. I was talking like this morning. <laughs> you only got Japanese parts, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> this is wonderful stuff. Are you, are you sticking to comedy? Not intentionally, but I, in fact, I've just just started rehearsals for a new play called Lend Me a Tenor, which opens in March, which is a comedy. In fact, it's about the funniest play I've read in ages and ages. So. Tenor spelt T E N O R, oh, uh. as in all. Oh, I see. I thought it was Lend Me a Tenor, as in T E W N E R. <laughs> <laughs> Ten years ago, it would have been called Lend Me a Fiver. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it costs a good deal more to see it. Anyway, I, we look forward to that, and uh, the night is young, so please stay where you are, and thank you very much so far, Jan Francis. <laughs>